Hello friends, welcome back to Digitalk. So uh, this is the third video on Oracle WebLogic Server 14.2.0. So I have already posted two videos where I have explained the two major enhancement in this new version. Okay, uh, specific to this third video, I am going to explain five other important features that has been introduced in this particular WebLogic Server version. Okay, so if you haven't gone through the previous two videos, then the link I have provided in the description of this particular video. Okay, so now the first uh, uh enhancement okay in this version okay the support of jdk is 17 and 21 so that means your uh, weblogic 14.1.2.0 is certified to use with the jdk 17 and 21 you can't use any other version okay for specific version of 17 and 21 you can look for the certification metrics which i have explained in session one okay and there are a lot of enhancement in this particular jdk versions for example there are a lot of opt optimization there are a lot of bugs fixes that is to in improve or come in or enhance the overall stability of your applications so these enhancements stem from a better garbage collection enhancement for jit comp compiler and improved class data sharing leading to faster startup times and better overall performance so in a nutshell it has been designed or it has been enhanced in a way so that the overall stability or performance of your imp imp applications can be improved second major uh, uh, feature that has been introduced is for specifically for the upgrades when you are going for the upgrading your weblogic server okay so whenever we do the upgrade so based on the version that we are going to upgrade okay uh, we have to upgrade the weblogic server and along with that we have a multiple applications right and then we have to do a some kind of set of uh, feasibility study of our applications as well right so whatever the applications that we have currently that we are using is it supported on the new version or not what all are the apis or the functionalities that has been depreciated in the new version okay so you have to do a complete end-to-end -end feasibility of your applications right so now with the help of uh, two specific tools that has been introduced which is called the weblogic migration analysis tool and open rewrite recipes you can easily identify and upgrade the applications of your weblogic server which you have deployed on your weblogic server okay so weblogic migration analysis tool this tool identifies classes and apis that are no longer used so that you can address any changes required to, for the application for successfully deploy so that means you can do a complete end-to-end -end analysis of your applications that you have deployed in your domain with the help of this tool okay and then you can identify what all are the specific applications or apis that has been depreciated now okay and if you are going for the migration then you have to upgrade your applications or update your applications according to the new version right and open rewrite recipe is use recipes to simplify migrating your weblogic applications to new version of weblogic and java and once the changes that has been identified okay you can use the open rewrite recipes okay for migration of your applications or for upgrading your application to the new version so these are the two major upgrade improvement that has been introduced in this particular version which is 14.1.2.0 okay third win is the secure production mode enabled by default so i have given some hint of this in the session one as well okay so whenever we configure the domain so we have two mode one is the development mode and is the second is the production mode right and based on the mode of the domain that you're selecting there are different kind of a feature that has been enabled by automatically okay and specifically when we talk about the production okay where we have some uh, advanced configurations are enabled specifically in terms of the security when we do the domain configuration in production mode right so in order from least to most secure the domain modes are development production and secure production mode so now third is you can see that there is a secured production mode so what exactly it is it's as of weblogic server 14.2 when you select production mode it automatically enable the more secure default setting for secure production mode okay so that means when you are configuring your domain okay and when you select the production mode of the domain during the configuration then by default the secure production mode will get enabled that means the secure production mode setting will automatically get selected for you okay and that means your domain will be configured with the certificates and for the ssl ports okay so this we will see when we'll see the practical implementation in next few sessions okay i will show you when we'll configure the domain what exactly it is fourth one is the per domain ca so oracle web Live server 14 one two overhauls the demonstration certificate of the third to provide a more secure key store implementation so that means certain enhance enhancement are introduced for the key store implementation as well the demo ca is now unique to each new domain rather than shared across all installation of weblogic server 
right so whenever we configure the domain okay you know we have a mode where we can configure the domain for the demo certificates right if you would like to enable the ssn in your web logic with the demo certificates then you have option to enable the demo certificates option which will configure your domain domain with the demo certificates okay which is not specifically recommended for the production right but we can use it for testing purpose or for uh, for enabling the ssl if you have the web logic inside your uh, internal network in your organization right so so far what we have that 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 the demo certificates are common across all of the installations okay that means you can easily move your uh, certificate files from one uh, domain to another domain as of now okay till 1411 okay but now 1412 onwards uh, the oracle has introduced the demo certificate which is specifically tied up with the particular domain that means you can't use the demo certificate across the different domains okay so for each and every domain you will get a unique ca certificates okay and additionally the identity and trust is stored now in the pks cs12 format so now the identity and jk trust is stored that we create to store our different kind of a certificate and keys okay we were using the jks earlier in in the web logic okay so now that uh, key store format or the identity and key store trust is stored key store formats has been changed to pks cs12 format right and the validity period for the new demo certificates and key stores are shortened compared to previous releases they now expire after five years and six months respectively so now the certificate that is going to be created which is specifically for each and every domain okay they will have the validity of five years and six months so if you are using this de demo certificate in your environment okay then you have to renew your all the certificate and demo certificate after five years and six months Right, so this is I'm going to show you in the practical session when I will show you the complete end to end installation and the configuration of a domain. So there I'm going to explain you all these features. Okay, where exactly it is. Now fifth one is specifically related to the uh, data sources. Okay, where we configure the different kind of a data so uh, database parameters. So for example, whenever we configure a data source, so we have to provide the username, password, your database host name, your database port name. Right, we specify a lot of different configurations with respect to database. So this data source configuration is specifically when you are when you are using the Oracle database, either in the on-premise or maybe you are using the OCI, which is the Oracle Cloud, okay, and where you have a different kind of a, uh, flavors of your database from traditional database to autonomous database, and there are multiple other type of database we have. Okay, so in that case, if you are using the, the Oracle database, then this feature is for you where. Oracle WebLogic Server 14C1412 provide enhancement to manage multiple Oracle wallet files and configure JDBC data sources to handle domain connecting to your Oracle database and to autonomous database and allow the domain to be easily migrated. So this is specifically useful, you can say, when you are going for the migration of your WebLogic domain. Okay. In that case, uh, you have to uh, define all the database related configurations in certain files. Okay, so there are a lot of uh, different wallet files for which is uh, specifically related to the Oracle database and along with that we have a lot of configuration configurations that we specify when we configure the data sources. Okay, so all this uh, uh, information that we uh, define in the uh, particular resource that we are going to configure. Right, for example, when we configure the data source, then we have to specify all of these details. And anytime you would like to change any of the data specific related parameters, you have to modify the data source. Right. But with the help of this particular feature, you don't need to modify the configurations at the data source level. OK, so now JDBC data source can employ DB client data module. So this is one of the new modules that has been introduced, which is called the DB client data, which may contain TNS names, .ora files, wallet files, traverse, trust key store, client identity key store, basically all the database client connection data used by our data source collected in a new type of deployment module. That means whatever the configurations are used by your application to connect to your database, whether it is a data source, whether it is a different uh, Oracle wallet files which contain your trust store, key store and the key different keys. Okay, so all these configurations are going to be stored now in a single module which is called the DB client data. Okay, now DB client data module make it easy to update database connection strings and password without requiring WebLogic data source configuration changes. They make it easier to do failover and switchover for disaster recovery, high availability for moving domains and database client data and for migrating domain to OCI. So now, Instead of doing the modification specifically in the data source file, what you can do, you have to change the values in the DB client data modules where you have stored all these values. By this way, you don't need to change your configurations specifically in the data source level. Okay, so this feature is specifically useful when you are uh, doing a certain kind of a failure or switch over to your disaster recoveries uh, centers uh, for high availability or maybe for you are moving your domain. 
okay from one environment to different environments okay or you do you are doing a kind of a migration so in that case you don't need to modify your uh, configuration files okay you have to update your db client data modules okay and then your changes will get reflected at the data source level as well okay and for that you have a deployment tool that is provided okay you can use the deploy uh, this deployment tool to deploy distribute and deploy and redeploy this particular module this which is has been introduced in this particular version so these are the five important features i have given you the uh, high level overview of all these features so wherever possible i am uh, going to uh, have a few more sessions shortly in this 14120 and i will show you all of the options wherever possible with the executions thank you